Hello everyone, Crydax here. Welcome back to Satisfactory 1.0. In our last episode, we got uh, phase two opened and ready to go, so now we're working on steel stuff soon, but we got a little sidetracked with Sam, the strange alien matter, and working on getting our dimensional depot. So that's what we're looking for right now. We can finally unlock it. I just need to grab a Mercer Sphere. In between episodes, all I did was grab uh, some more biomass. And I found another summer sloop, but nothing else interesting happened. So we can research the Dimensional Depot! Alright. Now what? Okay, so there's all sorts of upgrades for it. Dimensional Depot unlocked. Sam can be utilized to deconstruct matter down to its chemical elements in one dimension, and the Mercer Sphere allows it to be transferred and stored in another. Okay. Once parts are fed into the Dimensional Depot, they can be accessed by the Pioneer Inventory and Build Gun System at any time, anywhere. We see through the window. It is pathetic. Consume more blood. Consume more blood. The glass will not shatter. The metal will not bend. The wood will not splinter. Weave. Okay. Creepy. Alright, so upload speed, upgrades here. Stack increases there. And uploading from the inventory requires computers, so we won't be able to do that for a while. So it'll just be downloading from, from the depots. And then over here, we will need circuit boards and computers to get the power augmenter and the production amplifier. That one I'm very excited about. So we can't do that for a while. Um, for now, I just want to know how we build the thing. Dimensional Depot. Okay, we can already build it. I just need some SAM fluctuators. Oh, did those require steel pipes? I forgot the recipe. Yeah, so... Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we're just gonna spend another coupon. It's not the best idea because coupons are exponentially more expensive. Um... So it needs a thousand DNA points for a single coupon? Isn't each... Am I misremembering? Isn't each DNA point an entire alien protein? Where do I make the DNA points? Oh, there. So it's saying I need a thousand of these? That doesn't sound right. For one single point. Maybe you get... Let's find out. I'm, I'm guessing you uh, get more than one from each capsule. You get more than one point. That's my guess. Otherwise, that would not make very much sense. Because a thousand, a thousand... What's up, Spiplet? Um, yeah, a, th a thousand, you know, enemy kills, basically. I know the bigger enemies give you more than one, but roughly a thousand kills for one single ticket does not sound uh, very correct to me. So let's get this going. And put those in there. Alright, let's see what we get here. What's up, Lodro? Guess we should upgrade this guy. That goes a bit faster. And what do we get? 1,000 goes down to... Oh! You get 1,000 DNA points per capsule. Sweet. Okay. So we just got a lot of coupons from that. That's nice. That's nice. That makes me feel a little a little better about my exploration, too. That actually will end up getting us a lot of coupons. Okay, so I just need a few more steel pipes. Just to get me through the dimensional depot here. 
You'll likely never play this game, but you do enjoy watching me play it. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's very different, you know, and, and there are lots of people that are super into Factorio that just can't get into this game or aren't interested in it, which I do understand. Uh, for me, it definitely works, though. I, I like it a lot. OK, I need to grab some more Sam. And then we just need to do some handcrafting here. How many fluctuators did I need? Was it 10? I didn't pay super close attention. So I'm not really sure. I needed some MFs too. Some of them modular frames, which is on the list for automating. Automating modular frames was probably the next thing I need to do. And at least for now, I think I'm still happy doing um, individual, like rather than doing a main bus system, I'm doing individual crafting floors. So like I'll do a modular frame build and I won't use any of the same stuff that this build is using. Um, at some point I might move to more of a bus system, but the problem is belts are so slow right now that it doesn't feel like there's too much of a point in like having all your smelting in one area. Yeah, we're just not anywhere near that stage yet. It might might eventually get to that point, but we're not there yet. Um, what am I doing? Uh, oh, I'm building the thing, right. So it's 10 fluctuators, 10 MFs, 100 wire, and a Mercer sphere, which I do only have two of. Some of them got used for research. Um, all right, so how does this bad boy work? Well, let me just put it over here. All right, it's got a cool, cool visual to it. Drop items here to upload them. Okay. Oh, it's slow. 15 a minute. And then here you can see the Dimensional Depot inventory. So it looks like it can, the stack limit is saying per item type. So it's not like I can only have one stack in here. I can have one stack of everything in here. That's awesome. Now, the problem, if I can call it that, is there's no way to circuit fi this, so I can't just have a sushi belt of everything. I'll have to have a separate dimensional depot for every single item type, basically. Um, so which item do I want a dimensional depot first? Probably something that doesn't need a huge rate, like... Um, how about these reinforced plates? That feels like a good first first item to Dimensional Depot here. So I'll put it right here. Uh, it needs to be rotated the other way. And now that should upload the reinforced plates. And now I'll just have those. Uh, a little bit of a problem here in that it won't stockpile more than one stack. Is 100 reinforced plates enough? And this belt... I guess this belt will back up eventually. It already is backing up. So that that's fine. The belt will back up. These assemblers will back up. It'll, it'll all... There'll be a decent buffer between the assembler outputs and the belts and such. So I'm okay with all that. Um, yeah. What's up, Vatamouse? It's going well. We are uh, dimensional depoting, which is a really cool new mechanic. So now we can access those reinforced plates from anywhere. And that's just super handy. That means I won't need to carry around reinforced plates anymore. I will probably feed the rest of these into the awesome sink because there'll be a good amount of points for that. Oh, well, let's see. Mark two. Let's see how many points. 
points those were worth. Uh, it looked like a couple hundred, 150 maybe. 100 and, yeah, 120, I think. Oh, well, that should uh, ramp up production for a minute here. All right, our next goal is to build uh, the next floor of the factory here. Or I could go hunting. I could go hunting for more Mercer Spheres and work on getting all the dimensional depots. Ooh, I kind of want to do both. Because it would be really nice to have my other materials on the dimensional depot too. Hmm. For now, let's start building. Um, let's go with... I need to... Ah! Wait. Uh, need to unlock a couple more things. Let me take my coupons. And... Yeah, okay, take the coupons. I, I'm trying to do a lot of things in my brain at once. I want to make all the gas filters that I can real quick. And that needs coal. Ah, that's the problem. I don't have coal automated yet. So we'll put my mycelia away. I don't know why I'm putting that stuff in there. I guess I need another chest. I have another Mercer Sphere. Did I leave it over here? Oh, I did know I already have one more. Yes. Um. Okay, so I don't have coal, so I can't do more gas masks. Uh, can I research anything else? The purple slug needed modular frames. I can do that in a minute. Okay, let me go spend our points here. I would like... I already have the floor holes. Outlet Mark II could be good. Um, indoor lighting requires steel beams. Okay. We'll have to find out how much those actually light things up. If they don't light things up in a wider area than the street light, I'm not interested in lumen mode. Because that just is too much of a pain in the butt. It could be the sort of thing where if I go super late game and I want to work on, you know, cool building looks, um, I could do Lumen. But it feels like you really have to put a lot more time into those visuals if you're using Lumen. And I don't know if I'm quite to the point where I want to do that. Okay, yeah. So we want door wall. I want door walls. I want conveyor walls. Gates I don't think I need. Windows would be cool, but I'm not quite ready for that. And we're gonna need some of these as well, but I'm already at seven and I only have 13. Maybe I do tilted walls. Uh, no, I need catwalks. Catwalks versus walkways. Those feel really similar. Is it just the look is slightly different? They even look really similar to me. Like the walkways have the line down the middle. And the catwalk has stairs, whereas the walkway doesn't. Everything else is the same. Um, maybe I'll go with the walkways. The walkways have that little beam down the middle that makes them look a little more uh, you know, physically possible. Um, but I need 17 for that. I do have three more coupons. So, I guess I can sacrifice nothing and make a few more DNA and then I'll be good. What's up, Will Buck? How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Grab some stinger remains, and we'll turn those into protein. And 
And then, wait, we gotta turn that protein into capsules. And then we can turn that into awesome points. Or whatever they're called. Tickets. Coupons. Fix it coupons. That's what we're looking for. Alright. Bring me that DNA. enough coupons. I can buy all those. Wonderful. Because we're going to use the conveyor walls pretty consistently. And the door walls I think are going to be useful. I will want some windows. Um, I don't have yet. But that's okay. But like here, I'll probably use a conveyor wall. I don't know if it'll work. I guess... Hmm. That works. But this one might have to... Yeah, maybe I'll do... A splitter here. Now, this is the sad part. Can you build splitters onto a belt? And it'll connect to that one, too. That would be really cool. I know it didn't used to work that way. Um, let's see if it works. Like, I know it'll work to that one, because I built the splitter onto the end of that belt. But I don't know if it also will auto-connect to other ones that it was previously connected to. Does it work? Nope. Bummer. I wish it could, like, detect if when you built it, you know, it was, like, within a certain tolerance of a of another belt that it would auto-connect. Yeah, you just have to rebuild it. Oh, and that's... Wait, what? Why did I put a Mark II there? Oh, this is supposed to be Mark II. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. And that will get me... a wall. With stuff coming through it. Cool, 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 cool. And then... How tall do we need to go? Probably three. Three tiles. These uh, power poles I will have to solve at some point. And then... Optimization. I think I'll just do one meter foundation since it's like a... a floor within the building. Like that. Is that tall enough? Uh, I don't know if that's tall enough to go over assemblers. Let's find out. Walls. Three. Foundations. Uh, yeah. Seems to work. Just fine. Wait, what am I doing? Apparently I just figured out how to ping something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay, so we should be able to just zoop along these foundations. To the ceiling here. I'll have to figure out the best way to go from floor to ceiling. It will probably be the the zip line. Alt click to ping, yeah. Exactly. 
I just never play multiplayer, so the idea of a ping is basically pointless for me. Okay. Let's see. I could probably do this more easily from being on top of this whole shebang. But maybe I should do that. And I should probably stop building these on the edge. Because if I build walls there, it's going to look bad again. I'll need to figure that out. But... Anything... Ah! Didn't mean to jump off. Oh, good. It does auto-build wall mounts. Okay, that's really handy. Because if I build a wall mount here, then it's easier to, like, hop onto this rail rather than having to jump up from underneath a power pole. So that's actually really handy. Um, and we need our zip liner. So then I can just go up a level. Sweet. I don't know how far we need to zoom out. Is six enough? No. Six plus three? Yeah, yeah. I guess from here I can just go 10, right? And run out of concrete. We got more. Oh, I missed. We got more concrete, don't you worry. And more iron. Alright, I'm going to pause the YouTube recording and we're going to do a little bit of building. I, I don't think it's the most riveting gameplay. And we'll be back. All right, we are back for you YouTubers. And uh, yeah, so I have finished the ceiling, as you can tell, and we built some catwalks to traverse this factory floor a little bit more easily. And we changed our power stuff along the edges to wall mounts so we can get in and out through these little window areas. I will add actual windows once we've unlocked those. I don't have them yet. The only thing I have right now that could be construed as a window is the conveyor walls. <laughs> Are kind of like windows, uh, but not really. So, yeah. I may, due to visual, I may end up putting some walls on the sides as well like that. But I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not. For now, it's okay. Um, I may do more pillars as well, rather than just the four corners. I may do another one in the middle. How many squares are there in the middle? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. So I can, I, there is actually a middle to it, which is right here. Right? Four in between each? Yeah. So I may do this. He says as he's actually doing it. I don't think it's a May. I am doing this. <laughs> um. Oh, that's weird. So when I built the pillar through it. Oh, never mind. For a second, I thought it was only disassembling part of the. Like, it split the belt into two halves, but that's not what it was doing. So I'm not sure what I was. Not sure what I was thinking. Um, okay, I want it to like face that way. Okay, another pillar in the middle. I think this is the middle. Oh, it's shorter. <clears throat> shorter in this dimension. Still an odd number though. Flashlight would help. Cool. All right. It's feeling pretty good. I wonder 
wonder if I should remove... Should I turn these into catwalks? Rather than ramps? I kind of liked the ramp feel. So... Hmm. But I could just, you know... Catwalk thing. Uh, no. I liked the way it looked. I liked the way it looked before. I'll just have to make a way to make it feel um, like it's not. These were here. Whoops, there we go. That's what we had. Okay, so I just need a way to make that not feel as weird from underneath. I feel like this is where it kind of looks strange. Maybe those could be one meter instead of the two meter, because they're not part of the same Let's try that. Let's see if that looks weird. Yeah, that actually might look a little better. Hmm. Not sure. I think it looks pretty good. All right, sweet. So then we need a way to get up to the next factory floor, which will be our little, little zap gun. Uh, what happened? When did I do that? Whoops. That's a big problem. Um, I think that one was connected to over here, and I disconnected it. So that's what happened. That's what happened there. Uh, I guess that's a good opportunity to work on upgrading this to Mark II. So that we can get more, more iron. And we'll go over here. I do need the portable miners, which is annoying. So, equipment workshop, portable miners. Make a couple of those bad boys. I wonder if you can handcraft stuff from the Dimensional Depot. Because now that we've got stuff in the Dimensional Depot, I wonder if that can be utilized from the... Uh... There's a bad guy here. I should probably care of that. Uh, yeah, I wonder if that can be utilized from the crafting menu, or if you'd have to, like, take it out of the Dimensional Depot into your inventory and then craft from your inventory like normal. Is there one more? How many are here? Just three? Where is this four? I think this is four. Alright. Mining... Oh, another good uh, thing to note is we have power shards now, which means I can overclock miners, which is probably the main place I will actually use overclocking at this stage. So I think I talked about it in the last stream, but like overclocking assemblers is fine, but it's only ever going to save you half of an assembler per power shard, right? Like it doesn't change that much about your factory. It is nice and convenient sometimes to do it that way because you don't need to split stuff into as many pieces and all that. But at the end of the day, it's only saving you half of a building for each one. Once you have the manufacturers, it's nice because those are bigger buildings and they use more power and whatnot. But anyway, but miners, obviously, it's a big difference because your node only has so many ores coming out of it. And by uh, improving the output, that's pretty great. 
Can you not? Oh, interesting. I thought you could put a merger right on the end of a building. I don't know why I thought that. Really is not a thing. You can stack mergers on top of each other now, which is really, really funny. But then they're kind of floating. So that's where um, you can do something like that. Which looks weird, but also... Wait, why didn't it let me do that? Oh, I have to finish the belt. Like that. And then I can do that, and that. And there you go. Now it's not floating anymore. Beautiful. Why half of a building? Am I forgetting how power shards work? I thought one power shard only could let you overclock 50%. This is the wrong uh, merger direction. Yeah, I thought power shards were only 50% each, so you could overclock to 150% with three power shards. Am I just, like, totally remembering that wrong? Very possible. It's been three years since I really played this game. <laughs> so, I wouldn't be that surprised if I was wrong about that. But that's what my memory was telling me. Uh, no, I don't think... Because you can fit three power shards, first of all, not just two. So it's either 150 or 300 percent. But three power shards, I think, boosts you to yeah, 250 percent. Okay, so I'm I'm correct about that. Then. All right, let me just double check this is working properly. These are all Mark One belts, which is acceptable because between the two miners, we should be getting. should be getting 30 a minute each. Which then should merge into a single 60 a minute. Okay. And then this is the Mark II belt, so then all four miners put together should give us 120 a minute iron. Now, how many irons am I using over here? I don't like the trees clipping through there. Oh, right, I'm adding in... I'm adding in that conveyor. Uh, I feel like I can do that better. Can you attach a merger or a splitter onto... You can. That's nice. A little funky. Um, hmm. That's like a little too far in there. I guess I could have two belts coming in. Uh, what am I what am I doing? I guess now I can just have this be a mark two belt. I think shoot, I missed that one. Have I upgraded the whole thing? No, I didn't upgrade that one either. Okay, I upgraded the rest of it. So the whole thing should be mark two now. And then this other belt of 60, I am now no longer using. So I have a free belt of 60, is what that means. Because um, this whole floor uses 120 a minute. It actually uses a little less, but not a ton less. Because I'm using... I'm using 60 for the rips, yeah. And then for the... Whatchamacallits, 
the rotors we're using like 45 a minute rather than whoa um rather than 60 so i think i'm using 105 instead of 120. So yeah, basically a Yeah, I wonder if because when you're running at the the thing from the side, it's tough to like pick the right direction that you want. You have to you can't aim kind of perpendicular at it. You kind of have to aim along it. I think. Not exactly sure how it decides which way you're going. But yeah, up here we are going to be working on. Oh, I have no rotors. A bummer. I should also have a couple places where we can go from one floor to the other. And I can always move where this is, but at least for now, I want a cool way to do this. What's my cool way to do this? Is what I would love. Are there ceiling mount or just wall mount powers? Because it'd be cool to have a power line like. There are ceiling. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Although it needs to be a little higher. Um. Go up another, what, two meters, maybe? That there. The wall mount there. What's funny, though, is it's like I want a wall mount mounted in the floor rather than needing a power line. That's gonna be trickier to do, isn't it? Um, I guess it would be less tricky if it wasn't centered, because I could just do this, and then build that, and that's one way to do it. Um, but then that's gonna be off center for a foundation. And if I want it to be centered on the foundation, how do I get another foundation that's offset by half of a foundation is the question. Well, is there an easy way to do that with the tools we have? It's possible a walkway is the answer? Probably can't mount these on a walkway. Wait, you can? Wait, what? You can build power poles on walkways. So there's news for me. Um, so there you go. Problem solved. I can just do that. Build this. And then we've got our little elevator. Fireman's pole. Wait, it's not working. Wait, it doesn't work. The heck? Is it too vertical? Is that a thing? It's not working. That's so interesting. Will it work if it's more angled? Oh, there we go. Why is that one not? That one does not work. That's so weird. Okay, you can't do vertical. So ignore, ignore that. That's crazy. Oh, uh, I was very excited for that, and it doesn't work. Okay, well in that case, uh, we'll put one there, and maybe that's enough. Nope, that one won't do it either. So your angle needs to be what? I don't know, more than 80 degrees or less than 80 degrees. However you want to measure that, probably. Uh, what about that? Is that good enough? Yes, that is good enough. 
Interesting. Um, now, what I can do instead is mount it on the bottom of one of these. Uh, but it mounts it sideways. I guess I'll just put it here. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, that'll be good enough, I guess. As my little elevator up. Maybe I should just use jump pads. <laughs> That's not that elegant of a solution, I would say. really don't like that. Maybe I just use a pillar instead. You guys are getting to see my iterative process here. Alright. That's a lot better. Yep. Although, funnily enough, just barely different size models. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so there's my little my little elevator. I feel like it just looks better with that on top, even if it's not holding anything up. Or me. Uh... Yeah, we'll leave it that way. Anyway. This is going to be a modular frame factory. Welcome to actually playing the factory part of the game. So, an assembler. We needed rotors. That's why we did all this. LOL. Um, why don't we turn the rotors into a dimensional depot? I do have one more. I do have one more Mercer. Wow. I do have one more Mercer sphere. So let's go do that. And we'll use our last Mercer sphere on uh, that dimensional depot. I do need 10 modular frames and 10 of the, that's the wrong hockey, space bar, there we go. I need 10 of the fluctuators, which I think I need some more sand for that, which I have in this chest, as well as some quartz, I guess I'll just hold. I'll turn that into shatter rebar at some point. But yeah, 10 SAM fluctuators. Obviously, we'll automate all this at some point, but it'll be a while before we can because the fluctuators require three ingredients. And that means a manufacturer, which is not till the next space elevator phase. Because assemblers can only do two ingredients. Yeah, 10-10. 100 wire. That's cheap, though. Yeah, we'll have rotors as our other dimensional depot item. And then, what that means, though, is I probably don't even need this elevator anymore. Um, can I put it onto the end of the... You can't. Probably need to rebuild that belt. Yeah. But yeah, what this means is I basically don't need uh, to come down here anymore because now it's going to just put all of our rotors into the Dimensional Depot. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Also, you can't really walk on top of these very easily like you can with normal storage containers. They're a bit more bumpy. Okay, so now we have rotors and rips accessible. And once I get, I think my next priority, obviously we'll do modular frames with the dimensional depots as well. That'll be super nice. Um, and then I'll probably want to do the, the upgrades before we put other things in there like concrete and iron. Because only one stack of concrete is not really enough if you're doing a big building project because it uploads so slow. It's only 15 a minute that it can upload the items. And so, if I only have one stack of concrete, then if I blow through that 500 concrete, then all of a sudden I'm only getting 15 concrete a minute added into the depot. So it's a little too slow right now for the big ticket items. But for the slower stuff, it's great. Um, 
seeing what all we got going on here. So we'll need steel, but first I need modular frames. Let's do a small modular frame factory on this side over here. I say small, I don't know how small you can make modular frames. What's up, Jacob? How goes it? Because you need three reinforced uh, plates. Three per minute. So, this is the goal. I think the goal is four a minute on modular frames. I believe we'll do a slightly overclocked um, Yeah, we'll do a slightly overclocked one making stitched iron plates. So let me go grab a power shard. How am I feeling for the new release? Awesome. I am loving it so far. We're just getting into phase two stuff right now. Also, I think I liked... I liked this idea. I'm gonna keep doing it. Maybe I should have one from like over there. Okay, and what did I just. I already forgot what I was doing. I was grabbing. Power Shard. Okay, so with a power shard, we should be able to get this guy clocked up a bit. Yeah, so you can go up to 150, Dave, if you're still here, for a power shard, for a total of 250. Now, we want a target rate of... It's interesting it doesn't update the power usage as you change this. It is exponentially more. Um, but the cost isn't as bad as it looks. It looks like it's way more when you're running power shards, but you also have to remember you're producing things faster, so you have to divide by the 1.5 if you're producing stuff 50% faster to see, like, how much power are you using per item compared to what you were doing before. Um, 69? Nice. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we barely need to overclock this, but I, I think it's... I mean, is that even worth it? I don't know if it's worth it, but whatever. So we need 20 iron plate and 40 wire. And then on top of that, I'll need 24 more rods. Can I go to nine? No, see, that's the other... Wait, how many would three of these need? Yeah, I would need nine. Hmm... Yeah, I'll just stick with this. Four modular frames a minute. I'm playing, I'm, I'm not rushing. Um, problem is the smart, what's it called? Not smart plating, uh, framework, versatile framework. Those require half of a modular frame per minute. <laughs> So, for my 1,000, I'm only going to need 500 modular frames. Okay, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Okay, yeah, this is fine then. Because I'll basically just borrow these module frames to make the versatile frameworks. Um, so, 24 iron rods, 20 iron plates, and 40 wire. That's really not very much input stuff. Um, let's work our way backwards. Let's start with the depot. Build it with, we'll do one, one kind of free space here. So that will be the depot. And then we'll move the assemblers up a bit. Got 
gotta walk way around the edge here. Yeah, if I want to build things a little more compact, I need to kind of work my way backwards like this. So then this guy will have a merger. I just built two on top of each other. Cool. Or no, that one's underneath. Weird. Alright, let me get these. Okay. So output's figured out. I'll change that to a dimensional depot when we can. And then for this guy, we'll do... I can never decide... Ever since these vertical belts got unlocked, I can't decide if I like doing it like this or if I like my old method, which was basically having, um, I'll just show you. Basically, you have the splitters here, and you got your you know, normal connections like that. Um, and then these ones, you just have connected to a belt going across and slightly above, uh, something like this, um, what is it doing? Wait, why won't it let me do that? Oh, because it's going the other way. That always, that feels weird to me. It's like falling forwards. I don't know why, but that doesn't work with, uh, my brain's not like comprehending that. Um, but yeah, you can just do something like this and then you put your splitters aligned, which even works with holding control. And then you do that. And so using the vertical ones, it feels like is kind of unnecessary sometimes when you can just do something like that. And I think I will. Heck, I could even move these. These are these are way too far. I'll move these in a tile. Rebuild. Oops. All right, I'm back. Uh, and I decided on a simpler solution where I don't need both splitters um, just because there are only two buildings here. Obviously, the, the final splitter in a manifold is useless, so a lot of people skip it. A lot of people don't because it looks inconsistent. But with only two buildings, I feel like it's appropriate. So this is what we're going with. And the straight corners look fine and nice. And so those will be our inputs of rods and whatchamacallits. Um reinforced plates and we'll try to get all that organized now the reinforced plates i think i want lined up with that building can i fit it here i think i can put it here and actually put the splitter in front so what if might be a bit iffy. What if I put a splitter right in front of it? And then I just attach those to it. It'll just save me a lot of space. I'll, this is technically a little bit of spaghetti. Um, yes, but it's, I think, an acceptable level of spaghetti. That looks kind of bad, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um, okay, can it do this? No, no I can't. Um... Can't I? 
going to be at this angle. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. That looks a little less disgusting. Okay, sweet. So then there is our stitched iron plate output with not three power shards. Just the one. Production rate is six. I'll do 6.1 just to make sure we're fine. And then we're going to need one constructor. Maybe I do 6.01. So we don't have any rounding errors. I don't know if there are rounding errors that happen with that sort of thing. I feel like it could be. But yeah, we're only going to need one constructor. I do want to leave kind of the same clearance along the wall here. And we're going to get that as close as we can get it. I think that's probably good. And then that'll make the iron plates. Or maybe that... Maybe that should be the, the wire maker. It needs 40 wire. Uh, so I'm going to need two wire makers or an overclocked. I'll just do an overclocked. Okay, I'm not going to lie. That's really going to bother me. I'm going to trust it to not do rounding errors. I want the nice numbers. I want the nice numbers. Okay. So I'll just do an overclocked one of those. 20 copper ingots. It only needs one smelter. Very small amount of copper needs to be up here and then we'll need um, one for the iron plates here and that won't need any sort of odd clocking and then I need two for the rods that'll be 30 rods and these need 12 apiece Works perfectly. And I'll do a merger. All right. And we can even underclock these. Save some power. Now I'm trying to remember how the clock speed power usage works. I think it squares. The number? Or is it to the 1.5? I can't remember. If it squares the number, this will only use 64% of the power it normally would use. Which is quite a bit of savings. Um, and so I need 24 iron plus 30. So two iron smelters and one copper smelter is all we need. Which is quite simple. And it's also nice because I can just line them up. This one needs room for a splitter. Did I leave enough room for a splitter? Okay. Perfect. And then these can just go straight across. Copper, iron. I'm actually surprised at how little we actually need for modular frames. They're not that much more expensive than reinforced plates at the end of the day. Six iron rods and one and a half reinforced plates. So, I guess they're about twice as expensive, maybe. But a reinforced plate is only three copper ingots and what is that? Fifteen at five iron ingots? So they're only about eight ingots each. I don't know. I guess I'm only making four a minute. That's why I don't have a huge build here. <laughs> That's the main reason. Um and then I'm gonna need power. So let me get the walls set up. So we'll carry 
carry the power along the wall. Power lines probably yeah, clipped, clipped into the building a smidge. with a single one. That, I don't mind that. And then we'll need some power poles for the constructors. I do really feel like that mod might be useful <laughs> that lets buildings chain together because you basically just do this anyway. Oop. I'm going to connect to that. I'm basically just building power poles in the building. So it would be kind of nice if they could chain. Um, I guess I do need another power pole on this one. So there's power for that. Turn on my flashlight. That? that was weird. That one was highlighted. Um, what else do we need? I mean, I guess we need to actually hook up the power. That's important. Or something like that. Access to the ground. Just all sorts of power connections down there. All right. So now we're powered up. And then I just need the ore. And the ore is gonna be that iron and that copper. Copper can come in right uh, here. Your logistics, no, walls. There, wall. And then the iron should come in right there, I guess. Okay. That was a long fall. All right, conveyor lift. Pop it in right there. Splitter. Give me a splitter. There we go. Split. Okay. A little too low. Let's go. Oh, now it's snapping. Okay, so there's conveyor lift numero uno. Copper's good to go. And then iron. Bring from the side. Kinda need those wall, uh, those wall mounted conveyors now. Yeah, let's unlock those. We have enough. We have two tickets. So that gives me four total. I think that's enough. For the wall mount. Yeah, I only need a single. Ceiling mount's also only a single. 
I'll take wall and ceiling conveyor mounts. As then I can... aptly demonstrates, you can never have too much management. Let's see. Will it auto mount to walls? It will. Cool. So then I'll actually build backwards from that one. And I feel like Is that flat? Hard to tell. That feels pretty flat. Feels relatively flat. And then let's do like that. Oh, weird. Holding control doesn't work. So there's no option to come straight out. Uh, from one of the conveyor lifts. Because when you're building a conveyor now, you can hold control to, like, force straight lines and stuff, but it's kind of interesting that that doesn't do it. Um, alright, let's just clean this whole thing up, actually. Because, like, now, if I want to go straight, I can hold control, and it'll go in a straight line from the previous, um... But then it does that, right? What's up with that? Why would it want to be over here? I don't know what holding control, what is it snapping to when it's going all glitchy like that? It's very weird. I don't totally understand that. Um, so yeah, a little, little glitchy in places. Clipping the pole. And then that looks pretty clean, if I do say so myself. Uh, compared to normal Crydax, that is extremely clean, I will say. So that's nice. Sweet. Alright, and then we'll do straight... Um, wait, what? Why is it not building on this edge? That? Oh, there we go. I guess that's the way it's supposed to work. Um, yeah, let's just come straight out from there, and I'll just build a splitter on the end of it. a little bit. And that should do it. Are we making enough iron? Well, if I only have two smelters, then yes, because a belt of 60 a minute can handle two smelters. Nice. So we should be good to go. I think we just automated modular frames. the wire. And iron plates are uh, just about to be produced right here. And then we got iron. Oh, well, look at the power. It says three megawatts. Is that exactly three? Is that rounding? Rounding. No, it's not. 85% so would be 3.2. 80% is exactly 3. How does that work? 80% clock speed. Is it like to the power of 1.5? What's 0.8 to the power of 1.5? It would be 71.5%, so that's not right either. Hmm. I forget what the... There must be some sort of formula it's using. Like, what happens if I clock to 10%? Or maybe I should do 50%. That's the simplest. 
supposed to measure. 1.6 megawatts. So 1.6 is 40% of the power. And the clock speed is at 50%. How about when the clock speed is at 40%? Loses another. Uh, I don't understand how this is working. Thirty percent clock speed is using twenty percent of the power. It's twenty percent clock speed use. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Actually, all I know is I'm saving two megawatts for free. So, oh, fine. I'll take it. Also, power. How is power doing? I haven't looked at power in a while. Uh, we are capacity of 360, and we're just not that high above it. Our max consumption is way above our capacity, which is bad, because that means if everything were to turn on, we would uh, go, go boom, and that would be bad. So, we don't want that. Are we making some reinforced plates yet? We are. Oh, the output's not hooked up. That should do it. There we go. Sweet. All right. Awesome. Okay, well, I think that's about all we uh, all we need to do in this episode. We're already an hour and 12 minutes, so, you know, classic Crydex. But yeah, I will edit out some things like I did today, um, you know, just because I don't think every minute of gameplay needs to make it to the YouTube episodes, and that way you guys can skip some of the more boring just production, or not production, uh, construction parts when I'm just designing stuff or playing around. Because uh, I plan to do more of that, you know, in this run, and I think it's nice to cut some of that out. So you can expect to... To see some more of that and if you want to see every minute of me figuring out how to do the aesthetic builds and stuff then you can just watch the vods which are in the live tab on youtube and they're also up on twitch for a while but they don't last forever on twitch so that's the reason i'm also multi-streaming youtube is so that there's a permanent vod of the live stream so anyway, uh, that's about all I have for you guys in this episode. As always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you'd like to support uh, my production of videos and content, then you can do that over at patreon.com slash I thank you guys for considering that. And you can get your name in the credits and everything. Cool stuff. Uh, but, you know, obviously, like, throwing your money at a random internet streamer is something you should only do if you have the money to spare. So you guys know what to do best with your money. And if you think it's worth... Uh, the value, then go ahead and sign up. Other than that, I'll leave you guys to it. Have a great day.